Hello friends, in this video we will discuss about role based authorization in ASP.NET and how to use authorize attribute to implement it. Now before watching this video, I would request you to watch our previous video where we have used authorize attribute to authenticate the user. Now before starting this, let's see what is authorization and what is authentication. So authentication is basically verifying who you are and what is your identity. Whereas authorization is verifying what access you have. So there is a difference between authentication and authorization and both can be implemented using authorize attribute. So in the previous video, we have looked at the use of authorize attribute to prevent anonymous access to controller or controller action. So this is what authentication is. However, you can also limit access to certain parts of your application to specific users or roles. So this is authorization. A common example where roles are used is administrative functions. The actions which requires entity to have admin role. The role based authorization ensures the authorized users are allowed to view or perform certain actions, thus maintaining the integrity of the application. So suppose you have an application and there are certain functions which you only want a certain users to access and perform. So for those certain users, you can implement role based authorization. So what you can do, you can have a role, you can create a role and assign those roles to certain users and then basically implement role based authorization on that functionality. So only certain users with that role would be able to access that functionality. So how to do that using authorize attribute, we will see and it is pretty simple. Role based authorization checks are declarative. The developer embeds them within their code against a controller or an action within a controller. The developer also specifies the role required by user to access the action method. Now in the screenshot, you could see there is an action method contact and this action method is decorated with authorize attribute and we have specified admin role against the roles property. So this is how you can use authorize attribute and specify the roles which would be required by the user to access this contact action method. The contact action method would be only accessible by users who are member of the admin role. We can apply this at controller level as well. Then it would be applicable for all the actions of the controller. We can specify more than one role separated by a comma. So suppose you have another role and you want that role with the user to access this contact. So you just have to specify that role comma separated with the admin. So in that case, in order to access contact, the user should have these two roles. Now you must be imagining like you have to implement this entire setup like register login and roles. And when the user gets registered, a role should be saved to the database against that user. So I'm not going to implement that entire setup because I'm going to use a default template in Visual Studio 2015, which would create that setup for me. And I would use that setup to demonstrate how to use authorize attribute. And just for information, uh, 2000, the project which gets created from Visual Studio 2015 uses ASP.NET identity to implement authentication authorization. So let's go to the application. So this is my project that is authorized role and it is already in running state and this is how it looks. So this is the home page uh, of the application and you could see there are links like home about and contact which would render different views and we have register and login as well. So now if I go to the register, you would see a form which would have roles and which would have details like username, email, password, confirm password, and these are the roles. So currently I have two roles in my application that is admin and user. And this is the database for my entire setup that is ASP.NET authorized role. And this is also created by the project itself. So currently I have two roles and no users. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two users. 
so my first user username is user1 email would be user1 at the rate email.com and let me give a password and the user1 has admin role so let me register this so it automatically log in me in with the user1 so let me log log off it and register another user so this would be user2 user2 at the rate email.com password let me set anything this would be a normal user and let me register this as well okay now if I select the user table there would be two users okay and these are the user information and there's one more table which basically maintains the user and role link and that is ASP.NET user roles so there would be two entries in that table that is user ID so this user ID is basically user 2 and user 2 has role that is user and other has admin okay now I'm going to go to my solution and currently if I click on this contact it basically asks me to log in that is because if I go to the controller home controller and if I go to my contact page it basically says authorize so let me remove this entirely and we'll try to access it without any attribute so in this case it is accessible to all the users all the anonymous user because it is not decorated with the authorized attribute so when I click on that contact link a contact page should be displayed so let's wait for the application to run and if I click on the contact you would see this contact information now let me close my application again and specify authorize attribute and I'm going to say this method would be accessible to users having admin role okay so now our user 2 doesn't have admin role it has user role so I'll be logging in using the user 2 and we will see that that page is not accessible to user 2 and user 2 will be redirected to the login page again so let's wait for the application okay now I go to the login I specify user2 at the rate email.com and user2 password I click on login so I'm logged in using user2 and I click on contact so you could see it has redirected back to the login page and it this is how role based authorization works so it is not allowing me to access that contact page now if I log off and log in using user1 now user1 has admin role and if I log in through user1 and click on contact I'll be able to see that page just because user1 has that admin role so this is the difference how you could basically prevent access to certain users and allow certain users with admin role to access your page now we'll do one more change here so instead of roles I'm going to specify users which can access this functionality so here I'll be specifying uh, user 2 so I'll be doing vice versa here so in case of roles user 1 was able to access in case of users I'm specifying user 2 so user 2 would be able to access and when you specify user 2 here so you have to specify the username not the email okay now I'll run this application and I'm going to log in using user 1 first so that I can show you that it is not accessible and then we will access it using user 2 
So just wait for the application, click on login and let's log in using user one. Okay, now click on contact. So you could see it has thrown me to the login page. Now let me log off, log in again using user two and let me log in. Now if I click on contact, that basically displays the contact page. So this is how you can basically specify users as well, which users can access this functionality. And you can specify more than once. That is also fine. So here you, you could specify users and here you could specify roles. So in that case, it would be combination of users and roles. Okay. So this is how a role based authorization works and authorized attribute is pretty much powerful and it is very simple to implement it. I hope you like this video. Thank you friends.